the one goodbye that I know Jared and I both had to deal with was the goodbye to uh, the Winchester brothers. Wow. And that was felt. Yeah. That was that was really heavy. And you'll see it reflected in the episode. The whole mission is saving the world. This is where it ends. We didn't have a next season. Um, and so we knew we were coming back for those episodes that we had been preparing for uh, about a month or two. Um, so it was nice to know that there was a carrot at the end of the stick um, and that we get back to go uh, visit Sam and Dean Winchester again. My entire life, you've given us safe. It's you and me. The mindset of kind of prepping to say goodbye as you were up there shooting the regular production season, then COVID hits, you go home. Yeah. Now you go back for those six weeks uninterrupted. Have you guys had to kind of reevaluate saying goodbye? Are you finding, did you have to like re get into this mind state of wow, it's over again? I don't know what this says about me, but I was dreading the goodbye in March. Not because I didn't want to say goodbye, but just I don't, I'm not good with goodbyes. You know, I just don't like saying goodbye. And you know, I hope you have a great life. I, I, I don't like that. Um, and so the fact that it got put off, I was almost a, a little relieved knowing that it would have to come at some point. When we came back, it was, now it was like, you couldn't hug and you couldn't touch each other and you couldn't be within six feet and there were masks. And so you couldn't see smiles. And it was almost like this weird diet version of saying goodbye that for me, I was like, good. I didn't want to say goodbye anyway. I often say, you know, when the people that do like to sit in that goodbye and be like, no, it's okay to say goodbye. And it's, it's okay. I, I felt like it was, um, I was saying, we'll see you later. I'll see you when this pandemic's over. I'll see you when there's not a mask on your face. I'll see you when I'm able to hug you. And I'll see you when I'm able to, to properly embrace you and say thank you for so many years. Uh, so I won't say goodbye right now. I'll just say, see you when, when I, when I can see you. Yeah. I think, uh, similar for me. Um, and I, I feel like trying again, find a silver lining <clears throat> this horrible pandemic we've dealt with. Um, it's sort of taught me um, a bit brutally, like, hey, things aren't gonna work out exactly the way they're supposed to. Things aren't gonna be exactly the way you thought or you'd like or you'd wish, uh, make the most of it. And so I think, I think a lot of my mindset for the last six weeks has been just make the most of it. You know, it's, it's obviously less than ideal, like Jensen touched on with people wearing masks and uh, we were joking, you know, we when we would walk off set, we had we had one way we could walk onto set and one way to walk off like COVID regulations. And so when we'd walk off set, like I think he and I both felt like the the stereotypical sort of like ass actor, like all the crew would start, like the, the sea would part. Like, hey, like these people we hug, we're like, oh yeah, they're not running from us because they don't want to see us or because we've told the producer, like don't, don't let them look in our eyes. It was like, these are our friends. They just have to, they have to answer to their bosses. I don't want them within 10 feet of us. Um, so you're yelling from your little tape mark at, on your way to your trailer, like, hey, how's it going? How's quarantine? Good to see you. You got a new tattoo, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was difficult, but we made the most of it. And we got to kind of spend, like Jensen said, like we didn't really say goodbye to anybody. We said, see you later. And we've both been around long enough that to know that whether or not we do make it to Vancouver again or somebody makes it to Austin, it really was goodbye to a lot of people. You know, there are certainly people we'll see again, um, but we've all been around different sets long enough where uh, you're like, oh my God, I, I've loved you guys intimately for a month on a little movie or two months on a bigger movie or whatever the case is. It's like, I can't wait to see you again. And here you are 20 years later, you haven't seen them again. Um, so I understand that it was goodbye to a lot of people, um, but I understand and that I will see a lot of the other ones again. And now we're all getting used to Zoom and FaceTime and we can easily at least see each other's faces, albeit from afar. Uh, so just trying to keep our heads up about it. I will say, Matt, uh, I'll add to that real quick, that the one, the one goodbye that I know Jared and I both had to deal with was the goodbye to uh, the Winchester brothers. That was felt. Yeah. That, was, that was really heavy and you'll see it reflected in the episode yeah. uh the the emotion of it anyway because <clears throat> there's there's certainly parts of of the final episode 
where uh, the the character and the human being playing that character, uh, their emotions are very intertwined. Hey, Jensen Ackles here. And Jared Padalecki. On our last and final day shooting Supernatural. Our last shot, as a matter of fact. That's right. We just wanted to thank you for, uh, for being with us for 15 years now. And uh, it's been a great pleasure and an honor to have you supporting us all these years. With COVID situation and all the safety protocols and things that you guys are having to deal with, what was that last moment like with, with whatever goodbye you could say to the crew? Yeah, that was a funny day. We were up in the GBRD uh, up in Vancouver and there's no cell phone service there. And so it wasn't, it wasn't like a classic day where you're FaceTiming your wife and talking to the kids and helping them get down to bed or telling them to eat their dinner or checking in with friends and family and all that. It was it was like, okay, well, now I'm halfway to set and I'm about to have 20 minutes into a place that has no cell phone service. And so it kind of forced you to be present, even though so much of you wants to distract yourself and be like, uh, this isn't happening. I'm gonna call my kids. Hey guys. And you're like, ah, oh, I see my kids. They're smiling. They're excited. It was really forcing us to be there. And the final, you know, um, that's a wrap. It, it didn't happen immediately. It wasn't like the scene was over and it was okay, cut, you know, check the gate. That's a wrap. Uh, Bob who directed the finale, um, walked over to us and a lot of the other crew, uh, walked up and he kind of looked around and, you know, he kind of took his moment and we all kind of took a moment. He's like, okay, well, uh, that's a wrap. You know, it was pretty, like I get a little warm in my throat even talking about it. Yeah, I had I had cried a lot of tears in the literally seven months since I had read the scripts, the last two scripts, because we got them in either late January or February. So I'd had my chance to cry my tears. I'm glad I did because that last day, though it was bittersweet, it was more sweet than bitter, you know, because I was like, okay, I got, I got the sadness out to some degree, I'm sure it'll come again. But selfishly, I was like, man, I can look around and smile. And there were a lot of tears all over. But Ackles and I were kind of looking at each other like, man, we just, it's like finishing the Seattle Marathon or whatever. It's like, okay, we did it. Dude, we did it. You know, we put in the work. It wasn't like, hey, we're famous or hey, we have, you know, this many followers. It was like, hey, I've been with you for 15 years, 15 and a half years. I've seen you sweat. I've seen you bleed. I've seen you hurt. I've seen you going through stuff personally and put it aside for this show, for your character. And I know I've done the same. And it was just, it was, it was bittersweet, but it was sweet, man. It was happy. It felt like I could do this again. We could do another four, uh, 15 seasons. <laughs> like, let's let's call Peter Roth and Mark Pedowitz and see if they uh, if they'll re-up us for 15 more. There was certainly a satisfaction, I think, that that occurred of yeah <clears throat> of you know we we did it, yeah. we did it. You know, it was it was definitely a an emotional high five moment. Congratulations in completing the unthinkable task, you know, to to bring a show, to birth a show, to carry out a show at a high level for a long time, and to complete a show at a high level for a long time while maintaining who you guys are. Tease me with something in the final episodes for the fans. Uh, are they gonna see a cliffhanger? Are they gonna see a period to the end of things? Give me a little something for the fans to grab onto. To tease the finale, uh, it is supernatural, so as you know, it's always a cliffhanger. Uh, no matter how it ends, uh, that that cliff is hanging. Beyond that, episode 19 is more like the season finale of season 15. Episode 20 is like the series finale. And so like any good series finale, in my opinion, uh, it pays homage to the beginnings. And so Jensen and I worked in a few, uh, so the writers did on their own, but he and I also worked in a few little homages to those out there who uh, who have been around since the get and uh, who are familiar with the canon and lore and history of Supernatural. So there are a few little uh, Easter eggs in there. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to know your reveal, because <clears throat> especially the, the one uh, the one at the end, those that know will pick up on it. Oh yeah. No, we'll just think it's normal, but, and that was all Jared. He, he said, he said, hey, I, I got an idea. And I, I was like, oh, well, of course we're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was, yeah, it's, it, you know, the, the final episode, uh, there, there's some Easter eggs that are laid in there for, um, for the hardcore fans, for sure. Uh, and, and it's also, um, I'll say this, it's, it's really nice to see the brothers doing what they are so good at. Our last chance, our one shot. You're shouldering a great burden.
We don't have a choice. For the long, long time fans, keep an eye out. Uh, there yeah. are a lot of homages. Yeah. We end the way we began to some degree. Yeah. Families have been part of this schedule, this structure, this existence yeah. for Jared and Jensen, you being tired, you hopping on planes, you hopping off planes, us going to these conventions. Yeah. That all doesn't exist anymore. How are the families uh, dealing with this, the kids, the wives? Um, when are you going to let your kids watch the show? Have they seen any scenes? And do they have any idea how big it is? You know, if it's not Paw Patrol, then my kids aren't interested anyways. Uh, they know I work with Uncle Jensen. They know we play pretend. Um, we both, Jensen and I both have had instances where we pick up a FaceTime from our wives and it's one of the kids and we happen to have blood or something and they're like, why do you hurt? Why are you bleeding? You're like, it's not real. It's with Uncle Jensen. Look, Uncle Jensen, touch it. Um, so I think, you know, I think Jen is excited to have her, uh, her less than stellar assistant back in Austin to take out the garbage and walk this around. This was the recently. Floor. Yeah. So I think. I, I know Odette, who's three and a half now, she keeps going, Dad, are you coming back at Austin, Texas today? I'm like, not today, baby girl. Okay, tomorrow. I see you at Austin tomorrow. I'm like, Err. But it was also the buildup to our final day of Supernatural was so sad that, you know, hopping on FaceTime with Jen and the kids and going like, this is what I'm getting back to. It was a nice way to, you know, keep the tears at bay when all I want to do is cry and say goodbye to Sam Winchester and, and Supernatural. Um, so they're excited, you know, I think Jen's excited to have me help run around and play basketball with kids and baseball and soccer or whatever, chase lizards, uh, pick the chicken eggs and all that. Um, I can't wait. I'll be home in a couple of days. Um, I gotta just drive across country, take my time, say goodbye. I have to talk about the post supernatural moment for you both because as much as I'm heartbroken to not be uh, your dad in the past and see you guys as Sam and Dean, I am thrilled for your futures. I think these moves are incredible. Jared, I'm talking about Walker yeah. um, and the new news that our lovely uh, Genevieve Padalecki uh, is, is joining you as your on-screen wife. And, and Jensen, you playing kind of this original Captain America-like superhero on the boys. Talk to me about both of these projects. Okay, I'll start. Um, yeah, it just got announced that Jen is gonna be playing my, uh, my dead wife. Mm -hmm. On, uh, on Walker, which is cool. So we'll be in Austin together and uh, getting to work together again, how we met missed, on Scramble. Missed opportunity, missed opportunity. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get to pretend. So Jensen and I have already gotten to pretend to kill my wife and now I get to deal with her as, as dead. Uh, no, but she gets to be in the show, which is amazing. Um, she's such a big part of, of the show anyways, whether she was on screen with me or, or not. Um, that'll be fun to work there again and to work in Austin. I haven't worked in Austin since 2008, um, but to sleep in bed um, at home and to be a part of my kids' Zoom classes, I guess, before I go to work or whenever I get home or whatever the schedule's gonna be like. When the uh, commute doesn't involve an aircraft, it's always nice. Yes, exactly, as you well know too, Matt. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to tell the story. Uh, we're really proud of the stories we have and the, the, the themes we're kind of dealing with. Um, and so, you know, I didn't want to, and I said this before publicly, like I didn't want to work after Supernatural. I was like, I'm done, man. Like I'll get a phone call from a buddy and go do a show. Hopefully that's, I mean, that seems kind of arrogant. Like I'll, I'll accept phone calls, but I mean, like I didn't want to go seek work. And then this storyline came up and the cast characters kind of started getting built. And I was like, oh man, I, I'm, I'm ready to, to jump back in the pool if they'll have me, you know? Um, so to be a part of developing it and producing it and creating it uh, has been really special and new ground. Um, I'm thrilled uh, and my, my love for my new project, I wanna stress this, does not in any way detract from my, my love and gratitude for the project we all just finished together. Well said. Thanks. Justin, what do you got, buddy? I've been a fan of the show. Uh, <clears throat> since I saw the first episode, so uh, when I was talking to Kripke over the the court over the the quarantine break, uh, I just basically mentioned, "I'm like, hey, somebody's going to be unemployed pretty soon. What's happening over there in uh, in, in your world?" <clears throat> and that uh, and that kind of started the conversation. And, and he called me the next day. He's like, "Look, there's there is a role coming up in in, uh, in season three that." Um, that he's like, I could, I could see you throwing your hat in the ring for. Her. And I was like, okay. And I, I wanna, I'll, I will stress this, that this wasn't a Kripke calling me and like, hey, now that you're available, I got something for you, come on over. And that was it. 
they had already they were already out to like some some uh, heavy hitters and guys that I was like I can't compete with that like what are you and so I fought I had to fight for it I had to fight for it uh, and I'm glad I did because uh, like I said I'm a fan of the show uh, I think they're doing really cool stuff over there it's uh, you know it's it's a it's kind of next level stuff uh, I talked to Phil Segrisha who who obviously was with us on Supernatural for so so many years he's over there doing. Um, doing really great stuff he's directing he's producing he's uh post-producing and so he was telling me he's like get strapped in pal because it's this this is a this is a different kind of beast uh so i'm excited about that i'm excited to see uh you know just a different uh a different house go visit somebody's somebody else's house for for a change um i will of course miss the one that we built for 15 years but uh i think this is uh this will be a fun move and an exciting move and like i said there's there's still familiar faces over there so it won't it won't be i won't be completely uh fish out of water but um i'm excited to, to put on a superhero outfit too that's that's kick ass i actually have to go <clears throat> i actually have to be in la for the next couple of months because it takes that long to build it so it's like every two weeks you got to go in for a fitting and and they build and build and build and these things are like works of art um so I'm excited for that. It's uh, yeah, it'll be cool. Finally, something that my you know three-year-old son can be really proud of because you know a flannel shirt and and some some boots are not uh, are not the coolest thing to a three-year-old. But a guy with a mask and a shield and a 12-pack of superhero costume abs or whatever you're gonna those, look like Matt Cohen. Those are those are real, Jared. Those are real. <laughs>